only question I'm going to ask about the finale. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you understand what it was about the episode that kind of upset everybody? <laughs> Did, wait, me personally? <laughs> well, just, just, just as a whole, because um, it was just, it wasn't the fact, well, yeah, Abby died, but it was, there was a line in there that she said, you know, I was here to move Ichabod along. Well, we certainly understand what yeah. they were saying, and we, yeah. we agree to a large extent on the overall issue. Yeah. Um, the yeah. final scene was vetted very carefully with Nicole. Yeah. This was something that she supported mm -hmm. and something that she asked for, mm -hmm. and um, I guess we, uh, we accomplished what they asked us to do. Um, I don't know that we anticipated the enormity of the backlash. Yeah. Um, the specific lines that you're referring to uh, were things that, again, like I said, were vetted, mm -hmm. and we really felt like the finale was something that gave her character uh, a very emotional send-off. Mm -hmm. um, we were also charged with uh, having to uh, move the series forward, yeah. and to do that we'd have to separate out um, what was the bond of those two witnesses and create a dynamic where we could carry the series on and move forward. Look, it was tough. I mean, it was tough for everyone. It was tough for us, too, because we all appreciate enormously what Abby and Nicole brought to the show and specifically the magic that Abby and Crane had together. Um, and that's not something we wanted to necessarily mm -hmm. give up, but for a variety of reasons um, we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. So the thing we were trying to do is make sure that we gave Abby the appropriate send-off possible, mm -hmm. one that sort of summarized the journey from the beginning of the series to the end, made sure that it was emotional. I thought Raven did an amazing job of writing those scenes. It was, they were beautifully done, I thought. Mm -hmm. So that was our primary focus, to make sure that she got an appropriate and emotional send-off, and as Clifton said, to then advance the story so we had somewhere to go for the next season. So that was, that was the uh, primary also, focus. Also, just in terms of writing it, like I was, that was a very emotional thing for us in the writer's room. Right. Uh, having come on the show in the second season and, and loving the dynamic between the two characters and loving the character, that was being tasked with writing that was not something that was pleasurable for me at I'm first, sure. but then I, we really jumped into it and decided to give, as these guys have said, give the character and the relationship its due and, and, a, and an emotional send-off. And when Clifton said the word like vetted, like yeah. Tom and Nicole were very much a part of the, those scenes. They, we read them, we sent them to the, those scenes to them before. We, they, we rehearsed them, we produced them together, and uh, every single line of it was a line that Nicole had uh, what fully supported. So okay. I think you could read a lot of things into a lot of lines, and I think for lots of different people, this show means means a lot and I, and I don't want to take anything away from any of those people because I know how important it is so I just want to say like you know you have to look at it through the lens of your own eyes I never wrote any of the words in there to offend anybody in fact I wrote them hopefully to uh, to support these two characters that we really loved and their bond and what it meant and what they meant to each other so yeah I, I think also they played that seen beautifully one of the things we actually I wish that more people I know I understand everyone yeah. there being upset but I'm really proud of that episode. I think it took everyone on the ground, the director, everybody did a great job. So Yeah, we would ask the, uh, the fans um, to look at that scene and look at Tom and Nicole and what they brought to that scene. That was not a scene that they were forced into doing at all. Okay. They loved it. Okay. When the series started, this was supposed to be this way? You knew it would end like this? We were, none of us were on the show when the season started. Oh, okay. Series. Right? Series started. Series, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but it, like any other show, it evolves as it goes along. You know, it follows the storylines and the characters as they go along. So nothing was planned from the start, even beginning from the pilot. Um, so it was something that we were all adapting to, both as the season as the series. Can you talk about any new characters that might be joining the cast and like, how they're going to fit into the new dynamic that you're going to talk about? Um, yeah, well, the, uh, at the end of the last season, um, uh, Crane was presented with a letter that was given to him by his mentor, Lord Washington, and it, it suggested that there was a whole lot more going on, and a lot of it goes back to the original, uh, uh, what we would call the uh, Black Den at that point, is now evolved into what it always should have been, which is uh, Agency 355, which was Washington's secret room of spies, um, and that would propel the show moving forward into Washington. Uh, when it gets there, we meet um, a lot of new characters, um, all of them are here, most of them anyway. Um, and, um, you know, starting with the first person that he encounters, um, you know, 
there's already something supernatural afoot in DC, and the two of them have to band together to figure out what that means. That leads them to uh, Agency 555, which is um, the, uh, the you know, was given to him by Washington to, to lead, but when he, find, when he gets there, he finds that it has been sort of a back burner. It's, it's become um, more complacent and more librarian and more research. Sure. So, like, so Crane ends up with a new partner. That's Diana Thomas, played uh, by Janina Kavanka, and um, she is an agent for Homeland Security when she first starts. Um, she's also ex-military, single mom, so her, you know, she knows she's a tough person. You know, she's a tough person. Right? Um, and they get thrown. She and Crane get thrown together out of matter of circumstance, which you'll see in the premiere. And the two of them work together, and that, that's when they discover what Clifton was talking about, Agency Three Five Five, which we globally call the Vault. And when they go there. They meet up with two other characters, uh, Jake Wells and Alex Norwood. And two of them have been working there for a while, but they didn't realize that all the resources they've been tending to until then, which have to do with the supernatural and the cult, were all real. Mm -hmm. And that's what Crane tells them, that everything that's in this vault is real. It, it describes a secret history of America that you weren't aware of. And so they, be, they formed the core of their new team. And then along with uh, Jerry Mills, who comes and helps Crane sort of basically whip these people into shape. That's the team going forward in this season, going forward in the series. No. Uh, oh, sorry, I was say, no. Also, the, the fun thing about uh, introducing this, this agency that ties back into training to Crane's past is it'll allow us to explore the sort of same great historical stuff that we love doing the show. It allows us to go back into history and uncover new areas, you'll see in the pilot, new areas of history that had sort of twisted, interesting, monstrous, demonic past that we didn't know about before. And it'll also allow Crane a new connection to his own past, to uh, to uh, areas of history that he was didn't even know about, and that he learns about. Because he's over the past three seasons, he's been in the archive, and he's sort of gone over every book and every nook and every cranny. So now there's new text for him to discover, a new history for him to uncover, and not just world history and, and, and colonial history, but his own history, which is very sort of exciting new ground for us to tread. Yeah, gives a fresh bend to the twist. Yeah. Now, uh, in the past seasons, there seems to have been uh, like a struggle between either being a serialized show or procedural. What's the path you guys are taking with this new season? Well, um, well, the struggle sort of ended last season. Yeah. It became much more uh, uh, episodic. Um, and we've taken the best part of that into this season. Uh, but because we're a shorter order, 13 episodes, we've been able to map out uh, more of a, a serialized element that we find uh, much more fun to write to, much more much easier to sort of plan out and really do a deeper dive emotionally because we know where the characters are going to have emotion. The, the character arcs in, in the season long mythology will always be serialized. So throughout the season you'll always find um, something that advances the story forward in each episode. But within the episodes we're always trying to create something that's sort of satisfying in its own right. So stories that you know start and end within that hour. So um, it's it's trying to hit that balance that we, we tried to do last season and we'll try to continue into this year. Also, we're trying to do also, we're very aware of the past history of the show and, and the people who have come before us. And what we like to do is rather than, although we do head off in new directions, we always try to find ways to keep it consistent with what has come before and add a new spin. And I think in this, this season, as we did last season, when we sort of went down the catacombs, we found sort of interesting past history about witnesses. This season, I think we'll see also that while it's new, it also informs us in a different way about what has gone before. How's the eternal soul stuff going to work? Is Abby Solo going to do that? Or is, because, you know, obviously, is Diana going to be like the second witness? Well, or are we, like, what is... It's a very good question. I mean, I think that the way that it was defined in the end of uh, episode 318 about the yeah. eternal soul that right. it passes on to someone new um, is we're, we're not thinking about it so much as Abby's soul, as we're yeah. thinking about it more about the mantle of witness is okay. passed on. And so, uh, and we, and we will, we will, you'll learn as the season unfolds, and it's a very big question for Crane and for Jenny, okay, uh, yeah. especially because it means so much to Jenny and to Crane. So together, they will be sort of covering the ground that, that, that you're asking in that question and, and digging into exactly what that does mean. Okay. The search for that new witness and explaining what you ask yeah. uh, is a big part of their motivation yes. going into the season. That's what drives them right at the start of the right. season and actually sends them to Washington, D.C and then meets the, this is how they end up being these new characters, uh, and it informs their journeys throughout the whole season. With that, is Nicole open to return and maybe a supernatural element at all? Or? 
Um, I'm not aware of any conversations uh, that the studio has had with Nicole. Um, you know, everybody left on really good terms. Um, so, uh, you know, I think anything is possible, but conversations like that have not taken place. Uh, what's the time period we're looking at between the end of uh, season three into season four? Two weeks. Two weeks? It's only a few weeks, so it's not a huge time jump, but there's a little bit of time. So we picked up pretty soon after you saw Crane being driven away by those mysterious men in black, and it's not too far after that. We have time for one more question. Are you ever influenced by the fans? I know some fans want to have the horse when you come back. Do you think you will be coming back to... Think the Habits Horse. What would the show be without yeah, the Habits Horse? Yeah, because a lot of times he was missing, and I know some fans are upset about well, that. Well, one thing about the fans, I would to say, we, this show has always had a really strong fan presence. Yes. And coming on the show in the second season is something that everyone, from the producers to the to the actors, uh, uh, they all told us that, that was the case, and I almost wasn't prepared for it. And I was, and it's been lovely all the way through to, to how passionate people are. And we always do, we do, we read Twitter, and we look at Tumblr, and we all do listen to the voices. I mean, we have to remain true a lot of times to our own creative vision and also to the direction that's, that, we, that the studio and the network want us to take, but we absolutely love our fans. Totally, and, yeah. we, uh, and we're very hopeful that they'll come along with us on this new ride with Crane. Headless will be back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.